Hello everyone, my name is Romat and today we're going to do a Tlia tier list for solo queue based on power and utility for all Tlia 5 roles. Uh, we're going to do this strictly because I want to inform people what her power levels are and because they cannot really get an answer from statistics on sites like OPGG and UGG strictly because there are no statistics and when you have only 3 or 5 or 10 players that play specific roles you won't really draw any conclusions from those stats but because I played all these 5 roles at Grandmaster levels I could share my ideas and opinions and maybe push you towards the right direction if you're curious about it. So, we will rank, as I said, based on power and utility and as you will see in the tier list we're going to do three kinds of uh, three kinds of separations. Basically we're going to have the bottom level, the middle level and the top level for all of these roles. Bottom level means you're just starting with Talia on that role. Mid level means you're quite comfortable, you're already an OTP and top level means you're perfected her on that role and you're playing basically perfect and you're very good not only at micro but also at macro. So, if you're starting, we're going to rank them from support to top, going through all of them. I swapped mid with jungle, but it's fine. First, we have support, we have the tier list, we have... Uh, I will rate as C tier on support on the beginner level, between A and B tier for middle level players, and between A and S tier for the best Tulia players or most experienced one or perfectionists. So, basically, when you're learning support, there are a lot of mages and champions that can do better than you without really stressing that much. Zyra can just press an E and she will be more useful than you. Brand can just stun you and this is again or cast ultimate and he's more useful. Tlia support is maybe one of the hardest to learn out of all of this. Uh, close to jungle and mid. Uh, strictly because there is so much macro that you need to understand and that's why I rated her as C tier and when you learn her a bit and you start to roam you're going to be much more useful you're not going to die as much on lane you're going to be somewhere between A and B tier compared to Brands and Zyras and other mages or Velkos who can be better than you just strictly by casting spells or even without roams and when you play against tank matchups engage matchups Draven matchups with a Leona that just jump on you and kill you well uh, when you don't don't know those matchups is going to be C tier because it's very hard to play them when you know these matchups and you understand when to back off and understand when to cast E because the dash is coming you understand when to cast W and full combo to set up for your ADC when you understand how to roam perfectly and to work perfectly and do uh, good calls for your ADC we engage now we have ignite and exhaust we can kill them and stuff like that you're going to have an between A and S tier level so uh, you're going to be able to maximize this champion's potential and that's mainly about support for bot tier uh, both APC, I put her at B tier for beginners strictly because I calculate this that you will play with a tank's uh, support when you play Tlia ADC. I assume you're going to play with a Leona or Nautilus or a Blitz or something that can CC for your full combo and it's not that hard to get the combo down so tank engages, stuns and then you do the full combo. That's why it's B tier because it's not so hard to execute. You don't really have to do that much and to roam that much and to put it in that much and if you duo with someone it can even go to AS tier somewhere in between as you can see in the middle power level here and while you start to learn and even to how to move around the map and position in team fights you're not you don't really have to roam much on Talia bot you just have to play the lanes and understand the matchups so it's a bit more simple than support obviously it's going to be S tier when you play perfectly and it can be only it can be with Lux it can be with uh, it can be with uh, mage support it can be with also a tank support most likely with the tank support you're going to do better but i see duo queue here at this year so i consider mainly duo queue you won't see many players playing it strictly because adcs are somehow uh, more useful not somehow surely more useful in the mid to late game but if you itemize properly and if you play properly in the lane you can nullify their adc but that requires you in order for this to be a steering bot that requires perfect macro understanding when you're getting ganked by the enemy jungler and perfect setup for your junglers and perfect synchronization with your uh, 
with your support in your first game however first 10 to 50 games you might be in between a and b strictly because their adc eventually will be more useful than you and if you don't play with something like lyandris or if you don't go for magis and stack it up you might have problems into actually being that useful into mid to late game or until you learn to not break comps on both support and bots so you don't really ruin your comp you have a mid ap a top ap if you go bot ap that's or support AP again that's kind of too much AP in your team and you can ruin it but it can be S tier again perfection only I'm not saying this is S tier when you see it above on the top level it doesn't mean that well uh, obviously I'm gonna be there someday no this is for the best of the best players and if you want to calculate you look for the middle one generally when playing when you play it good or you understand or think that you're playing good you're looking for the middle one so for support is going to be between a and b tier for uh bot lane is going to be between s and a or more towards a sort of like that and s tier only if you're one of the best players or understood or maximize the hundreds of games maybe thousands in some cases because it, it's the ten thousand hours rule you gotta go for it again uh, when we move we move to the jungle now you can see i put it in the b tier first strictly because at the beginning you're going to struggle a lot with Lia jungle if you don't really know what you're doing. You're going to face Kha'Zixis and Rengars, Xinzaos, you're going to face Olafs, you're going to face any melee champion that gets on top of you and you won't know exactly how to proceed. But once you get the hang of it and you start understanding that you have to farm a lot, you start understanding that you have to do rotations properly, you start understanding that you have to cast your properly to set up stuff in ganks, uh, you're going to be between S and A tier because that's where it is. You can see that in stats already. Uh, she is uh, higher in tier, the higher the yellow you go, and that's also correlated with how bad, how much you understand the champion and how you learn the learning curve. You can see perfectly a jungle players at is above S, so it's S plus tier, simply because you see it in solo in uh, pro play a lot. Uh, Talia was permaband and it's a very very strong champion for pro play and the best of the ladder is the pro play basically after the ladder there is a pro play above the ladder right so in solo queue it can be towards this tier if you play perfectly above solo queue somewhere there it can be s plus even in solo queue it can be s plus for me you're going to start as in jungle and b tier it's going to be hard at the beginning you have to understand when to be against zeds when to be against katarina when to be against uh these Fizz matchups and Yone matchups and how to itemize against them and how to play them or just to, how to dodge or how to ban them and after you understood these and after you understood the, these hard matchups even matchups like Zoe and Syndra are very difficult if you're not careful um, after you played a lot you can start to see her that she becomes an A tier champ but again roaming champions are not really good there right now but if you play it properly and you sync with your team comp and also works with your team comp obviously it can go towards s tier and if you understand her properly it can be even uh, right now i put it between s and a tier in the top level but you can go for s tier flat if you have a proper comp and you play properly i'm not even saying perfectly here Mitlia can be s tier if uh, even above what i put here if you play good and your team comps uh, kind of works with you because if you're going to have a jungler that cannot set you up a shivana for example uh, it's going to be very hard to deal with the lane, especially if you're getting constantly ganged by a Jarvan, by a Rengar, by a Kha'Zix, by a Ramus, and you're also against a Syndra. But in proper team comps that this works is going to be much more useful. And this goes as well for jungle, uh, not so much for bot and support, but jungle mid and top. Uh, team comp matters a lot more than support and bot and I could go on for that, but it's pretty much obvious it's because of the impact that you have on that specific role. Anyway, I'm on top, you're going to start at C tier because a lot of bruiser matchups are difficult and a lot of matchups are hard to understand. And if you don't know how to stay properly on the map and how to think it properly, like do I cast W under myself now? Or if you don't know when you're going to be ganked, and then it's going to be a C tier. But once you understand some matchups, it can go between A and B tier and then can slowly move towards S to A tier somewhere in between. That's the top, even if you play perfectly, I don't believe you can go above that. Going AP top Talia requires a lot of knowledge, so that's quite the real value between S and A if you play it perfectly. So on mid, 
it's much more to learn on mid and jungle than the rest of them because on jungle you need to understand rotation understand jungle tracking where to be on mid you have to keep in mind that you can be ganked from a lot of sides and you can be ganked from support you can be ganked from top and obviously the jungler or all of them and that's why in, in mid you have to have the most awareness of all of those in jungle then is the next one on bottom support you, are, you can you can do better with her strictly by looking at your own lane and sometimes trying to guess or tracking the enemy jungler but it's not as stressful so by stress levels mid is first with jungle somewhere jungle after that top then bot supports at even in utility again it's based on how we rated it so uh, in power levels i mean it's how we rated it here in this picture in this uh, tier list and Honestly, in fun levels, I don't even know which one is the most fun as I played all of them. I believe I like top and mid most because jungle is strictly boring at points to farm and farm and farm. Bot is also fun when you have a good engage. Support is fun when you roll. But I'll go for mid and top strictly because you have to not only outplay your opponent but sometimes to roam, sometimes to keep wave management which you don't really have to do on the rest of them, or only maybe on bot a bit but you have to keep in mind wave management, you have to understand how to do that. On mid you have to also know how to work properly with vision work and especially in jungle with the red trinket how to clear it. So there is a lot of things that this rogues could be theoretically put above so jungle mid and top could be put S tier flat or S plus if you play very very perfectly but then again it's all subject to discussion but this uh, the first two levels at least should be relatively close once you start the champion and once you understand it a bit uh, to how this champion goes and again I put support and bot so high because you can just Cast a full WQ combo based on some other CC that comes from your jungler and from your ADC or support based on what you are and you can just do the full combo. Then again, jungle cannot be B tier, can be D tier for example, or support can be D tier or bot, everyone, every one of those can be D tier if you're in a hard, hard matchup. So for example, it can be D tier in any of those against Irelia in mid and top, in jungle against the Rengar, it's very difficult to play against in support it's very hard to play against Draven if he's good or uh, someone who knows how to dodge or pick clans in bot as well. I could talk probably for hours about this but I guess uh, we got the point and we understood the tier list and that's about it. Thank you for watching guys and see you next time. I have some exciting video ideas next and it's not just gameplay videos, uh, just pure... No, it's, it's something... Uh, that I thought about more Tlia things so if you subscribed for Tlia videos you're going to get them and they are going to be more fun or different than the others and that's what I want to focus on for the next few videos and so I might not post that often like maybe I hope to do at least two videos per week so we're going to see join our discord for more Tlia discussion ask questions down below and have a wonderful weekend ahead because it's almost Friday here by the time of making this Thank you for watching guys and see you next time.